Here's more wrestling news for April 13th, 2022. And your headlines for this afternoon include, AEW Dynamite is getting special overrun tomorrow, WWE Legends' daughter has cameo role alongside Dana Brooke on Raw, Cody Rhodes makes fan stream come true on Raw, WWE announces first stadium show in United Kingdom in 30 years, WWE wrestler admits he felt unappreciated in WWE, real reason WWE just changed Austin Theory's ring name, Tony Khan accused of losing his mind after AEW Twitter bot claims, WWE called out for losing faith in Asuka, why WWE mysteriously replaced Rey Mysterio on Raw this week, WWE wanted Pat McAfee to team with Aaron Rodgers at WrestleMania, and more. We're kicking off with AEW Dynamite as tonight's show will have a special feel to the broadcast. On Twitter, Tony Khan announced that after discussions with TBS, it's been agreed that tonight's show has been granted an overrun and there will be more minutes allocated to the show. Khan said that this is in response to the great fans, great ratings, and a great card, but didn't specify just how much longer Dynamite will have, saying that it may just be a few minutes. No matter how long the overrun lasts, Tony Khan is looking to make the most of this extra time, and it'll be interesting to see just what closes out tonight's Dynamite after the usual 10 p.m. Eastern finish time. Over to Raw next as this week's show saw joint bachelorette parties when Tamina and Dana Brooke prepared for their upcoming nuptials to Akira Tozawa and Reggie. The guest list was certainly an interesting mix as almost all stars involved had appeared on AEW Dark and Dark Elevation over the past year, but there was one in particular who stood out. Fans watching may have recognized the blonde extra in the black dress as Miranda Gordy, the daughter of WWE Hall of Famer Terry Gordy. Part of the legendary Fabulous Freebirds, Terry Gordy also had a run in the WWF as the Executioner, but didn't last long in the role. As for Miranda, it remains to be seen whether this appearance on Raw leads to anything bigger, but her wrestling heritage will no doubt play a factor if WWE decide to use her more. More from Raw as Cody Rhodes once again got a huge response from the crowd and went the extra mile to make the night even more special for one fan in particular. During the show, Cody gave his white weightlifting belt to a young fan sat ringside, and judging by the video shared online, this meant a lot to the kid. Not only was this a huge moment, but it was even more special as Rhodes had been informed that this was the young boy's birthday, and this made for one incredible birthday gift. Rhodes has been giving out his weightlifting belt for a while now, but often had the belt thrown back at him during AEW events, including the November 24th episode of Dynamite in Chicago, Illinois. Recently speaking to Busted Open Radio, Rhodes said that he knew he was departing AEW after an event in Chicago, and while we can't confirm that these are the same Chicago events, we imagine the constant hostile response from AEW's fans was a factor in his decision to go. We're heading across the pond now as after months of speculation and literally decades of waiting, the WWE has confirmed a huge stadium show in the UK. Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales will play host to the show, which will be WWE's first stadium show in the UK since SummerSlam 92. WWE have held off calling this a premium live event, instead calling it a major stadium event, but this will be the biggest show to hit the UK in quite some time. In late 2019, Sami Zayn re-signed with WWE after rumors and speculation that he could jump to AEW. Joining in 2013, Zayn has gone from lovable underdog to obsessive conspiracy theorist, but it's not all been smooth sailing for the former Intercontinental Champion. Speaking on the Out of Character podcast with Ryan Satin, Zayn discussed his WWE career and how there were times when he felt undervalued by the company. I've been pretty prominently featured since coming up on the main roster. It happened once or twice where I was just sitting on the sidelines and those are the only times I really did feel like I was really unhappy here. It would only last maybe two or three weeks tops, but nothing is worse than feeling unappreciated and undervalued. Since re-signing with WWE, Zayn has shared the screen with the likes of Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Johnny Knoxville, and if this is anything to go by, the former three-time Intercontinental Champion doesn't have to worry about being underappreciated anymore. This week, Austin Theory became the latest WWE superstar to undergo a name change, as he'll be working solely as Theory from now on. Theory's name change is just the latest change to the moniker of a superstar, and the young superstar follows the likes of Big E, Cesaro, and Riddle to have his name shortened. Typically, these changes are made so that a superstar's name is easier to trademark and put on merchandise, but that wasn't the case for Theory. 
On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that this change was approved personally by Vince McMahon, who did not like Theory and Stone Cold Steve Austin sharing the Austin name. It's interesting that McMahon doesn't want Theory to be associated with the Rattlesnake, as following his performance at WrestleMania, Stone Cold has said he's happy and has no plans of wrestling ever again. With Theory getting a United States Championship opportunity on next week's Raw, it's clear that WWE haven't given up on the young superstar, even if they've given up on his first name. Last week, Tony Khan spoke out about critics of AEW, but did so in a way that has had everyone scratching their heads. Rather than speak about the concerns some wrestling fans have, Khan claimed that critics of AEW are paid trolls and bots, and claimed that an independent study he's paying for has proven this. Khan provided no actual detail for his claim, but implied that WWE is responsible for this alleged army of bots and trolls. Unsurprisingly, fans didn't appreciate being told that their views on AEW aren't valid, and on his Hall of Fame podcast, Booker T questioned what exactly Khan's been thinking. Is Tony Khan losing his damn mind? I know he's off into analytics. I think he works in that field, but people are gonna hate, okay? Everybody is not gonna like you. I know Eric Bischoff said that Tony Khan had thin skin, and this came out right after that. I don't know if that proves that or not. Booker isn't the only person in the industry to question Khan, as several wrestlers parodied the AEW president's claim of a bot farm, and Eric Bischoff has said he's embarrassed for the AEW owner. We doubt this will be the last outlandish claim Khan makes, but it certainly hasn't done him any favors, and we imagine Booker T isn't the only person questioning the AEW president's grip on reality. We are looking back at Money in the Bank 2021, where Asuka competed in her most recent match to date. As one of the entrants in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, Asuka was unsuccessful in capturing the briefcase for the second time in her career, and fans have grown concerned for her during this absence. It had previously been reported that Asuka had been cleared to wrestle, but the Empress of Tomorrow called out the report as false, as she had been legitimately injured, but has since made a full recovery. Speaking on the Busted Open podcast, Mark Henry questioned how WWE is using Asuka, and whether they've lost faith in their former women's champion. If WWE actually did lose faith in Asuka, I definitely think it's their fault, because when she came in, she was not the same Asuka that left. The Asuka that left, you know, I would show the Rocky videos of Asuka training. I would show her in the dojo with the young girls. I would show her working out with the intent of coming back and her looking in the mirror and seeing a video playing of all the success that she had and what she looked like when she had that success. And that's all you need. Despite reports that she'd be returning for both the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 38, both events went by without Asuka, and it remains unclear when she'll wrestle again for WWE. Speaking of missing superstars, Rey Mysterio didn't appear on this week's Raw despite being advertised for the show. Rey was meant to face Veer Mahan, who instead squashed Dominic Mysterio instead, with the young superstar leaving the arena in an ambulance. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained why Rey was missing from the show and when fans can expect to see him next. It's a medical issue. It wasn't false advertising or they changed their minds. He was unavailable tonight. So they put Dominic in the place and Dominic just got destroyed. They could probably do Ray in a week or two. Meltzer didn't specify what medical issue caused Ray to miss the show, but Raw also had to go on without Rhea Ripley, who was missing due to C-19 protocols. Whatever the case is, hopefully Ray is feeling better soon, and we expect he'll be hungry for revenge after the beating his son took on this past Monday's Raw. WrestleMania 38 news next as Pat McAfee won big at the most stupendous show of the year, defeating Austin Theory in singles action. A highlight of WWE TV each week, McAfee continues to prove himself in the business and at one point was close to aligning himself with a very big name. That's according to Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, who reported this week that there were once plans for McAfee to team with NFL star Aaron Rodgers in WWE. The plan was for the team-up to happen after McAfee's incredible performance in War Games in December 2020, in which McAfee's team came up short to the Undisputed Era. WWE had serious internal discussions about having McAfee bounce back from the loss by teaming up with Rogers, which would have brought huge mainstream notoriety to NXT. Obviously, this didn't happen, but Barrasso did point out that McAfee's history as an NFL punter has made him some impressive friends, names that WWE would love to use. The SmackDown commentator is good friends with Aaron Rodgers and has had him on his show several times in the past, and while this crossover fell through, there's plenty that McAfee can bring to WWE, even when away from the announce table. 
And we're ending today with Sasha Banks, who won big at WrestleMania 38 by breaking her losing streak at the Showcase of the Immortals when she and Naomi captured the Women's Tag Team Championships. Now the boss has diamonds around her neck, gold around her waist, and is celebrating with a new diamond grill for her teeth. Banks and Naomi are set to take on Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, though this match was postponed because of Ripley's absence on this week's Raw. But for now, the boss is showing off with her new grill on social media. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.